Hello, my name is uh, J. Lloyd Morgan. I'm the author of several novels, and I've been asked several times, uh, what's the best way to approach writing? What works best when it comes to writing? Because people start with the dreaded blank page. They know they want to write something. They want, they want to write a book, a short story, a poem, or, or whatever. And they, they're they just not quite sure, well, how do I begin? How do I start all of this? Well, what I have learned um, through time is that there's basically two types of writers, okay? And the type of writer you are will determine how you start. Now, the two types of writers are basically called pantser or plotter. I don't think these are official terms that are written down anywhere in stone, but they are good to understand the concept. Okay, what does that even mean, pantser or plotter? Well, let's first look at the word plotter. Plotter is someone who approaches writing in a very systematic way. Uh, for example, they would like lay out everything. They have ideas for the characters, the settings, um, you know, the conflicts, the resolution. They, they, they plot out everything way in advance and all the different elements that happen um, before they even begin to approach. They, they look at a bare bones kind of thing. And when you're first learning to write, this is actually not a bad approach because what happens often is people have a great idea, but they don't know really how to develop it. So if you if you basically look at certain elements of plotting a novel, the things to consider is like, you know, who's going to be the main character, what are their characteristics, the status quo, so what's going on in their life, you know, what's what's normal for them, uh, what is their motivation, do they want to stay where they're at, do they want to become better, or do they need to overcome something, and then there's the initiating incident, something has rocked their world, okay, um, to where then their things have developed over time after this you know, initiating incident has kind of changed, you know, them on you know different thing that's stuff that they need to start to overcome. Then there's this crisis. That's usually the, you know the main, you know, critical part of the book where almost all seems lost or whatever. Could be a, one way to look at it. And then there's the resolution. So, you know, to approach a you know writing a novel or or whatever using these basic concepts are very beneficial because at least you'll have a, some sort of structure in place. Now that's not to say that everything has to be figured out way in advance because I don't know if that's even possible. And honestly, it's not very helpful to part of the writing process, at least from my personal experience and speaking with others. So this is a tool to help get started and a help to uh, and a way to design a basic concept. However, that's where we have the panther, okay? Panther basically means flying by the seat of your pants, okay? And that is uh, an approach that a lot of people take when they start to write. They just sit down and start writing and see what happens. Um, the challenge with that is that if there's no direction, no, no way to go, then they may or may not end up with anything that's good and end up having to do a lot of, uh, you know, situations. But the idea of this pantsing, this flying by the seat of pants, is actually quite helpful when it comes to writing, and let's give you an example. So this is an activity that I often do with uh, the students that I teach, um, and it's called Let's Create a Story. So what I do is I, I, I set it up this way, is that I have a student, um, and I'll, you know, I just, I'll say, like, this is a student from this school, they're standing here, and their goal is to reach this lighthouse. And then I'll ask my students to say, okay, so how, how does the student get from here to here? Um, and the, you know, you know, then I have them respond and some will say, oh, they try to swim. And, you know, I say, okay, so they start swimming and then they get halfway across and, or not even halfway, they, then the water's too choppy and it's too cold and they're, they're not going to make it, you know, and then, so basically, oh, they, they, they look over behind a rock and there's a boat. Oh, okay, they find a boat. They start, you know, and then halfway across, the, you know, they, start, they get attacked by uh, something and then the students know what they're attacked by. And then what happens? What does the character do when they're attacked? And then blah, blah, blah. And I keep throwing conflicts at them to get to the point where they're to the other side of, you know, after they, after they reach the lighthouse. Um, so this is, it's interesting because as we are doing this in class, every time I've done this, the story is different. The ideas actually come while we are in the act of writing or while we're making it up. So, and we come up with some marvelous ideas. However, one thing that is lacking from that demonstration is um, sometimes they have, you know, and when I do that with the students, they have the, the character die. 
before they can get to the lighthouse. Um, and they don't seem to be like, well, it's no, not, big, not big of a deal, because they weren't super invested on who that character was. Okay, and that leads me to the next point, which is what makes a good story. Now, this is, I will you know, openly agree, this is uh, my general feeling, but it is uh, one that is not unique to me, that people, if people don't care about the characters, that won't really care about what happens to them. So, in the story of, you know, the student trying to get to the lighthouse, we don't necessarily know why they're trying to get to the lighthouse. We haven't described that. We don't really know who that person is, aside from them being a student. And, you know, if you go to a big school, then it's like, oh, it's just another person. But, if let's say, if it's your best friend, or if it's you, um, if you've developed the character enough, um, then they will care more about what happens. Now, understand, caring is not the same thing as liking. You may dislike the character, um, but you still care. You know, you want bad things to happen to them, you know, to the protagonist or, or whatnot. Okay. Now, this idea came to me, um, and again, I apologize because everyone's, you know, available to their own opinions, but this, this concept came to me pretty heavy. Um, I went uh, and saw the first Transformers movie many years ago. Uh, one thing about me is I have a wife and four daughters. I don't have any sons. And for whatever reason, every once in a while, I have to go to the movie theater and just watch stuff blow up. I, I don't know. It's just a thing. Anyway, so I'm watching the Transformer movies, and I wasn't super familiar with the, the cartoons from growing up. I didn't really have the toys. That was a little, not really the age group that I was in. So I'm watching this movie, and we're getting towards the end, and you know, robots are beating up each other, and you know, some explosions and loud noises. And we're just about toward the end of the movie, and I yawned. I was bored. I was bored out of my mind. And I, you know, and I reflected on that. I'm like, why was I bored? Well, because I didn't know who the characters were, and I frankly didn't care really what happened to them. If one robot died or one robot didn't die or stopped working or got blown up, I just, it just didn't, I didn't care. Um, and that's one reason why I really struggled, so that's kind of came to game that. Now, back to the idea of structure, the basic structure. So one of my books that I wrote, uh, Bring Down the Rain, follows the very that very basic uh, pattern of where I've got, you know, the main character, his name is Derek, um, and there's an inciting incident, and you know, stuff happens, and you know, he, he, yeah, without I don't want to see if I can sell him the book, but his his world is changed. Um, the basic premise is that he is a very promising baseball player. They get into an accident. Um, he ends up not being able to play baseball anymore. In his senior year in high school, he moves from North Carolina to Utah, so he has to you know basically start his life over in a different culture and dealing with um, the fact that what he wanted to be in his life is no longer what he wants to be. So that was the basic premise, and so I, there was a bunch of conflict and resolution. It follows that very simple pattern that I talked about earlier. Um, but then I hear from a lot of people, but I don't write that way. I can't really plot stuff out because then it gets boring, because what happens if, you know, the ideas that come to me? Well, so why learn plotting if you feel like you're a pantser, if you feel like you're a better writer, and you kind of fly by the seat of the pants? And this is a great quote that I heard at a, a writing conference. You need to learn the rules before you can break them. When it comes to creative writing, yeah, breaking rules is kind of what we do. Uh, the, the, the idea of coming up with a concept that is engaging and something new and exciting to readers is important. But there are really variations on rules that they're still kind of following, but you can't really break them if you don't know them. And that makes any sense. Um, and I learned that uh, lesson, so in my, my very first book that I wrote, The Hidden Sun, um, actually I, I broke a lot of rules when I wrote this book, uh, without giving away too much uh, of the, uh, the story. Uh, I still think this is one of my, you know, my favorite books that I've written. Um, basically, I broke a lot of rules as far as traditional storytelling went, but overall it's been very well received, and, and the fact that I... I knew what I was doing and I did it on purpose as far as breaking the rules made up the difference. Um, it wasn't like I was just completely, there, there wasn't a lot of like, well, that doesn't make any sense. But I approached it from a different point of view, but because I knew the traditional way of getting around it. And another learned, lesson I learned when it came to writing was that often when I'm writing a book, I'm really not sure what the story's about and the tone and the voice until I get like 
you know, about halfway through it. And that's when I love revision. It is part of the writing process. Often I go back and rewrite the first few chapters after I've got a sense of what the tone and the, you know, the story is about to really kind of match it up. That is something that a lot of people don't uh, think of as part of the process, but it, it really is. Um, once you've kind of got your, you're in your groove as it is, then the very first part of your story may seem quite disjointed because you haven't got that figured out yet. Man, some people are very skeptical about doing that, about going back and making changes because they wrote it, dang it, it's got to be worth something. Well, that's the concept of what does it mean to kill your darling? So I'll, I'll tell you just a quick story here. I, and I'm, I remember learning this from when I was studying, uh, when I was working on my master's. The story is of a, of a um, photographer, a young photographer, and he was up taking a picture one day, and he noticed there's another photographer and an older lady taking pictures as well. And they get to chatting, and, and he says, hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to get some advice on how to become a better photographer. And so she says, okay, well, tell you what, come to my uh, studio, and she gives him uh, his, her address. Bring your 10 best photos, and we'll look at them. And I'll tell you if they're good or bad, and we'll give you some you know, insight. He's like, okay. So he goes, and he brings his 10 best photos. And she looks at the 10 photos, and she puts, you know, some in a good pile and some in a bad pile. And she said, okay, these are good, you know, these are good and these are bad. Well, this, this partnership goes on for 10 years. 10 years, uh, every year he goes and he, and he brings his 10 best photos and she swords him into the good and bad pile. And after 10 years, she says, you know what? You've been coming to see me for 10 years and every year you come and every year I sort your pictures and every year you bring this same picture, this picture. And I put it in the bad pile, and yet you keep bringing it. Why? And the original, you know, the young man, who's not young anymore, he says, well, because I had to climb a mountain to take that picture. So it's got to be worth something. And that's, you know, and that's kind of the approach sometimes we take when it comes to writing. So it does take time to, for us to get some perspective and revision. Now, some people ask, well, how long do I wait uh, as far as when it comes to revision and and, you know, making sure that I had a chance to flesh out the story. Well, there's another great saying that stories are never done. You can revise them forever. They're, they're only due. Yeah. So that is something that you have to keep in mind, especially when you're taking classes. Um, you could always make things better, but eventually there has to be, you know, if you, if you publishers will get on you about getting stuff done. All right. So here are some four tips to becoming a better writer. So as I have done writing conferences and have different people say, well, I want to be a better writer. What are the things I can do? Well, here's the four tips that I give them. Number one, write and read. Yeah, writing and is any like any skill. The more you do it, the better you get at it. And by reading, you're seeing how other people are doing it, and you kind of get some skills. Write and read some more. And then write and read even more. Did I mention writing and reading? Yeah. You want to become a better writer? Do these things. <laughs> writing and reading. Okay. But really, the number one thing, uh, drum roll please, uh, the best way to become a better writer is to write and read. That is simply it. Okay, one last little story before we call it here. I wrote a, a short story, um, and I submitted it to this uh, thing called Parables for the Day. Um, and surprisingly, it was, it was selected as one of the top five um, best, and it was published. It was great, and uh, I was very happy about that, you know, whenever you can get something published. And you know, I have it be, you know, graded as, as a, you know, one of the better stories that's been submitted. Well, a little while later, uh, an author I knew um, said, hey, I, you know, I read your story that was in Parables for the Day, and I could have written that, you know. And I'm like, okay. Well, the answer was, well, I did and you didn't. It wasn't, you know, I did and you didn't. No, it's like the difference is that, you know, if you could have, then, then do it. You can't do it, you know, you're not going to be successful unless you do it. But what will people think of what I write? Well, keep in mind, you're writing for a particular audience, meaning that if they aren't your audience, they probably won't like it no matter what. For my books that I've written, um, you know, my, fir my first trilogy, The Bear One Chronicles, written for young adults. Simple as that. Um, and so if people are looking for, you know, a lot of sex and violence and, uh, you know, swearing and some of that, yeah, then that's not really what your particular thing is going to be. Also, keep in mind that, what should you write? Well, write something that interests you because the story would be more interesting if you are passionate about it. 
So those are some ideas about writing. Um, just, you know, now go practice them.